Hello and welcome to a very special episode of ClutchCast. I'm Matt Schroyer, I'm here with my project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster, and today we are going to tackle a custom intake system on this Z3 with the M52 TU B25 motor. Now there's not a whole lot of room under the hood of the Z3 as you could probably imagine. It was originally designed for a 1.9 liter inline four. This of course is the inline six engine. And unfortunately there are not a lot of custom intake solutions that you can buy off the shelf for the six cylinder Z3 Roadster. Fortunately, K&N does offer a custom Apollo intake system that's uh, sort of universal, that should fit for a wide variety of cars. So what we're gonna do in this episode is install an Apollo universal K&N intake system on this car, along with a 3D printed intake duct, which will go in the fog light portion of the front bumper. And after all that's installed, we're gonna take it out and I'm gonna to try to collect some data to try to give us an indication of if these modifications actually did any good as so far as bringing cold air, a large volume of cold air into the intake duct. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the parts I'm about to install, give you an overview of everything that goes into this build. Okay, so these are the basic core components that uh, that's gonna go into the Apollo intake system here. And starting on the left here, we have uh, the core of the system, which uh, is a K&N cone pod filter. You can see here, there is a product number. It's like B023B6. Haven't crossed shop to see if that's something you can buy off the shelf. This is fairly basic. It appears to be just a pod filter in a thick ABS plastic uh, cone and, you know, fastened with some uh, bolts and and nuts at the bottom there. As far as dimensions are concerned, this rear end here has an outer diameter of 70 millimeters. Uh, so if you're trying to size any extra pieces for this silicone adapters and such, keep in mind that is 70 millimeters outer diameter there. Also in the K&N Apollo kit came uh, this adapter for the front. It just fits on like so. This also has a 70 millimeter outer diameter. It goes like so. And also included with the kit was a bit of pipe. As you can see, it experienced some damage on the way to, uh, <laughs> to the residence. And the diameter is actually, inner diameter is actually sized, I think a little bit too small for the application. Um, it basically just matches the outer diameter of this. You really have to like jam it on there. Um, I don't think that's a particularly well-sized pipe. The other thing that came with the uh, the Apollo universal intake system is this um, this cone or this uh, whatever you want to call it, this adapter that's meant to go on. I assume the pipe here. However, uh, we're not going to use that piece and we're not going to use the uh, the duct, the pipe there that came with the system. There are other elements to the Apollo intake system that you can buy that are not included with the original system. One of this being a, a hanger that you can purchase and basically you are buying an L bracket and uh, some fasteners to go along with the saddle here. Um, I do actually recommend picking this up. I wish it was included with the system because the system is pretty hefty and you want to give it some support in the engine bay. You don't want it knocking around or anything like that. So do pick that up. It also comes with a, uh, a clip, a worm gear clip, um, and that is sized between, as you can see there, 70 and 90 millimeters, 90 millimeters maximum inner diameter here. Again, I don't know why this isn't included with the intake system, which is nearly $200. <laughs> it seems to be mostly plastic anyway. Something I wanted to tell you about these, these clips is there are kinds that you want to buy and kinds that you want to avoid. The kinds that you want to buy off the shelf have this serration here, but are not cut all the way through. You want to make sure there are teeth here because the kinds that have the cut teeth that go all the way through the metal here, that will actually cut into any silicone piping that you have in the system. So be very careful when you're shopping for accessories for your system. Make sure that these worm gear clamps are uh, serrated and not cut through. Anyway, that came with the saddle system here. A flexible pipe here. This is, did not come with the system. I bought this 
Additionally, some extra clamps here. These are sized a little bit larger to fit the rest of the system. This is a, oh, there it is. This is, has a maximum inner diameter of 100 millimeters and a recommended minimum of uh, 80 millimeters. So two of those here because the uh, rest of the intake parts on the car are, are a little bit bigger than the 70 millimeter outer diameter size that comes on the Apollo system. Also, you see here we have a uh, bit of muffler hanger. <laughs> this, uh, this originally was a uh, muffler hanger but it serves just as well if you bend it over a little bit to help support the intake system inside the car. And you'll see that being installed as well. So this is a silicone boot with a 45 degree angle. You need 45 degree angle because this system is gonna be angled down to be able to fit inside the cramped bay of the car. Largest portion here has an inner diameter of 80 millimeters. The math on this car has an outer diameter of 80 millimeters as I measured it. So that's what you're gonna need. On the other side, of course, is inner diameter of 70 millimeters to match the output of the K&N Apollo intake system. So again, 45 degree bend, 80 millimeter on one side, 70 millimeter on another. As it came from the factory through Amazon, it was a little bit too long, so I did have to cut about 20 millimeters from each side for a total of 40 millimeters. And there is a right way and a wrong way to actually cut up these silicone intake hoses. But what you can do is you can take a clamp like this, like I did, fit the clamp on, mark it off about maybe 10 millimeters each go, and then go around it with a razor and just cut off the excess. And that should not look as good as it was cut from the factory, but it should be enough to give you a nice straight cut around. So there, that's the silicone attachment to the intake boot on the car and to the MAF on the car. Lastly, and I'm really proud of this part, this is a 3D printed intake duct that has been modeled to fit the fog light opening of the front bumper cover. You can see it has the features of the fog light here, as so far as the uh, tabs are concerned. It's also got a nice hefty tab to fit in to the right part of the bumper. It is, so this was actually modeled by a uh, gentleman who sent me a 3D file over the internet, which I paid for, and had it printed out at Shapeways here in the United States and shipped directly to my door. It was 3D printed out of Nylon 12, which they refer to in Shapeways as durable plastic. It seems durable enough to me. Um, it's got a three inch outer diameter end on it here, which will connect to the rest of the system. So I'm very satisfied with this. I'll put a link in the description of where you might actually end up getting this uh, design file and also printed out but very happy with that. The gentleman who made this also made a matching design for the right side of the car. And I don't think I'm gonna put that in just yet, but I'm definitely gonna use this left side and duct that to uh, the intake system. If you don't have a 3D printed file to do this, well, you could always carve up a fog light for the BMW Z3. They're fairly available online. Um, just pick one out, <laughs> start chopping away. And of course it won't look like this, but you will have something that could possibly duck some air into your intake system from the fog light section of the front bumper cover. Right, so that's basically everything involved with the kit for installation. There are a few miscellaneous fasteners, which I will use, but that's fairly the extent of it. So let's go ahead and remove the stock intake system on the car. That's going to consist of removing the air box and the air box shroud which is just behind and attached to the left headlight. And also we're gonna be removing the left fog light so we can put in our new duct system.
Okay, now that the stock air intake system is removed, I wanted to point out a few interesting engineering aspects to this and packaging aspects, because it's not as if the original BMW designers had it wrong. The engineers were actually designing a, a very good intake system for performance and for noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how they designed the system. You can see we now have a large void where we can put the Apollo system, but originally the air would come in through the front here, through this duct, around to the shroud, which I have up here. It would come through the front here to the shroud. You had a little bit of a gap here before the headlight uh, system began, but it would come in through here, all the way down back here, and through a hole into the stock intake system. So actually, this was getting pretty good airflow uh, the way it was, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't sacrifice noise to gain some improvement. One aspect that I didn't like about the packaging of the original intake system is you really have to be careful of the cable to release the hood on these cars because the packaging in here is really tight. And if these lines should ever rest out uh, or anything in the system for the hood release need to be replaced, you can see that this is the stock cord and it would have been covered up by that shroud. So that's one aspect I don't really like about this system and I've driven this car for at least a couple years without that shroud attached just because I didn't want to have an emergency and not be able to get into uh, the cable system here to release the hood. That's no longer a concern now. Um, you can see where we're going to route the hose here. This is the kind of the void behind the fog light. There's, there's plenty of room down here and it would go up right back into the engine bay. Down here, of course, we have the uh, trim tab uh, pried off. You can see the uh, placement for the screws here and the placement for the tab to retain the, uh, the fog light. Of course, now we're going to put our new intake duct to replace that system. And then we're going to replace the, uh, the original trim tab just to make it look nice and tidy. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to install the Apollo intake system. All right, here we go. This is the fully installed Apollo Universal Air Intake System on the Z3 Roadster M52 TU engine. Silicone boot you can see there that I had to cut down to size. You've got the um, retaining saddle here that uh, goes back into the original intake mounting system. This again is just a uh, bit of exhaust hardware that uh, I've repurposed and I, I rather like this actually. To, it's working to sort of dampen any vibrations you'd get from the intake system. So I actually, I'm really impressed with this part, I have to say. Down here you can see again the Apollo intake system here uh, down into the um, aftermarket three inch tube. Headlight reinstalled and again, down to the 3D printed nylon 12 intake duct right here. Now, that's, <laughs> that's basically it, except for firing it up, seeing how it sounds, testing it out, collecting and analyzing some data from the intake temperature sensor via OBD2. But yeah, let's, uh, let's give this a go, let's see how it sounds.
So after all that work, we probably want to know, did it do any good? Now, I don't have a dynamometer here in the garage, of course, to, to measure any kind of power increase from this new cold air, ram air intake system. But what I do have is an OBD2 reader connected with Bluetooth to the Torque app on my phone. And with that OBD2 reader, I can read the air intake sensor on the intake manifold of this M52 engine. We know that we want colder air because colder air is denser air, meaning you get more air into the cylinder, and the more air you have in a cylinder, well, the more fuel you can add, and the more power you'll create from that combustion. So what I did is I took the car out in three different configurations. One, in an unducted configuration with everything else stock, meaning that everything else was normal in that intake system, except I removed the uh, intake cowl behind the driver's side headlight. I also ran in the fully stock configuration with the uh, cowl behind the headlight. And of course, I ran this car with the uh, new custom intake system with the k air filter, the hoses, and the ram air duct in the fog light. In each configuration, I took the car out, drove it around at highway speeds, and also in and around town. And what I found was pretty cool. I found that in the unducted setup, that the air intake sensor uh, measured air at about 41.9 degrees Fahrenheit, greater than the ambient temperature as taken from a nearby weather station. And that measurement is taken after the car has warmed up and at highway speed. Then I drove around in a stock setup at highway speed after the engine warmed up sufficiently and maintained a relatively constant temperature at highway speed. I found that the stock setup offered air that was on average 16.8 degrees cooler than that unducted setup. So right away you can see that the stock system is pretty well designed. It's very efficient at flowing cold air into the intake of the car. Now finally, I ran in this new custom setup. And what I found is an additional 5.7 degree Fahrenheit drop from the stock setup. Like I said, I don't have a dynamometer to measure any sort of power increase, but we know of the ideal gas law, which means that the volume and temperature of a mass of air are very much related. So in other words, when a mass of air drops in temperature, it'll take up a smaller volume. Conversely, that means that the engine basically acts like it's ingesting a larger volume of air. Using this relationship from the ideal gas law, we can see that a 5.7 degree Fahrenheit drop in air temperature for a mass of air will net you a difference of three one hundredths of a liter. Essentially, this means that you're adding three one hundredths of a liter to this engine, which already is 2.5 liters, so it comes out being like a 2.53 liter engine. All things being equal, for the same amount of horsepower per liter, that should be around a two horsepower increase. So not bad, right? Two horsepower. However, my hypothesis is that it's not just a matter of cooler air, although cooler air is important for horsepower. We also want to measure air flow. So how do we do that? Well, all modern cars have a mass airflow sensor or something very similar that measures or attempts to measure the flow of air into the intake system of the car. This is very important for the onboard computers to measure how much fuel to put in to match the mass of air. And typically when you're reading this through the OBD2 port, you'll get a reading in a measure of grams per second. Now, we know there is a fairly linear relationship between the flow of air in terms of grams per second and the RPM of the engine. If the engine is going through more revs, it's going to ingest air and generally it'll do that at a linear rate. So what I did under a variety of conditions in those three uh, setups, the unducted setup, the stock setup, and the custom setup, I ran the car around in, in the street and at highway speeds 
taking thousands and thousands of readings each at a rate of about one reading every uh, tenth of a second. And I took all that information and tried to match a best fit line in Microsoft Excel. And that best fit line tells you something about the efficiency in terms of grams per second flowing through the intake system. So what I found in the unducted setup was that uh, averaging all these points, uh, you could generally account for 6.8 grams of air per second per every thousand RPMs. And as you would expect, the stock system actually seemed to flow better. It flowed at a rate of 7.4 grams per second per thousand RPMs. And yes, it did seem that the custom setup flowed even better than the stock setup because what I found looking at the data was 8.2 grams per second per every thousand RPMs flow through this custom setup. So that is pretty cool because your gains can be more than just cooler air, it's also flowing more air, which is what we wanted, right? Now I must say though that this, uh, this data coming from the uh, MAF sensor was really quite messy. It had a high, what they call variance, meaning that the dots were sort of all over the place, but the trend is pretty clear. So all in all, I think that's a fairly uh, convincing argument that uh, what we did on this car actually resulted in cooler air and more air flowing to the cylinders of the engine. Well, folks, there you have it. It looks like a KNN Apollo Universal Air Intake combined with a 3D printed intake duct can provide some gains in terms of cooler air temps and more mass airflow. So I know that was a lot of work for probably not a lot of gains, but it does go to show you that there is some gain to be found on a naturally aspirated car with a setup like this. So I want to thank you for joining me and we'll see you down the road.